today we're going to talk about scary werewolf or dogman encounters. I really do hope that you'll enjoy these stories and as always do hit that like button and subscribe. It really helps with YouTube algorithm. And now story time. I was on my way to go camping and had just crossed the Mackinac Bridge to get to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. It was storming and just started pouring buckets of rain. While driving up a hill my daughter and I saw a man standing in the middle of the road. There was not great visibility with the sheets of rain, but we both pointed out the man standing in the middle of the road and we were worried he would get hit by a car. When he turned it was not a man it was a huge black dog. We both thought it was a man at first and then it was a dog and I can't explain it. It could have just been the combination of looking up from the bottom of a hill and the rain. I just think it is odd that my daughter and I both thought we saw a man. I stopped on one side of the road to help it and so did a man on the other side in a truck. I love dogs, and always stop to help when I see one in the road but I hoped that someone else would be able to help it because my truck was stuffed with camping stuff and the only place it could go in my truck would be the front seat with my daughter and I. It was still in the middle of the road looking back and forth between the man and I seeing it up close I was a bit surprised to see how big it was. I also felt uneasy and intimidated by this animal. It looked almost like a black German shepherd, but also wolfish. I was a dog groomer, so I have been around a lot of big dogs and this one was huge and if I had to guess what breed I would say a wolf hybrid. The guy yelled over asking if it was my dog and I yelled back no. The man then yelled here boy and patted his leg and the dog ran off to him. Seeing the dog was being taken care of I got back in my truck and got back on the road towards our camping destination. My daughter was telling me how it looked like a person standing in the road and then when it turned it was a dog. It may not be paranormal, but it was definitely an interesting experience. I was with a friend in her truck, and we were driving home on a winding mountain road in the western NC Appalachians. There were no streetlights, and it was pitch dark. We noticed another truck heading toward us suddenly swerve into our lane. My friend hit the brakes and laid on the horn, and the truck creeped back over. We were a bit shaken, and slowly began moving forward. It was then that we saw why the other truck had veered into our lane, there was a huge deer carcass in the road. And crouched over it was a gigantic animal. As we drove very slowly, my friend put her brights on. What looked like a gargantuan wolf was bent over the carcass, eating. It had very long front legs with little fur on them. I've worked with wolves and had never seen one this huge. It suddenly looked up at our truck and the headlights caught it fully. Black fur, muscular forearms, and golden slash orange eyes that looked eerily human. I remember we both made gasping noises. My friend kept driving and then we turned and looked at each other and both said that was a werewolf. She was not at all a person who believed in any sort of supernatural stuff. We drove the rest of the way home in silence. We only spoke about it one time after that, and it was to compare what we had seen. At that time, I had no idea about Dog Man. And I forgot all about it until two years later, when one showed up in my backyard. I'm happy to share that encounter if anyone is interested. I live in rural Illinois and had been experiencing strange noises and activity around my house for a period of a couple months, when one night, at around 4 am, my dog started to act up, like she wanted to go out. So, I went to let her out. Before I did that, though, I flipped on the back flood lights and peered out, through the mini blinds, because I had a weird feeling. When I did that, in the backyard, about 75 feet away from me, this wolf slash dog slash man like thing was standing upright, on two legs, looking at my back door. It had a proportionally huge head, 
with pointed ears on top and I noticed an amber colored eye shine. Its head was K9 in appearance, like a German shepherd or a wolf. It had broad, strong looking shoulders, with accentuated deltoid muscles. Its torso was sunken in towards the abdomen, like a dog and it had no neck. Because of its massive head, it had an extreme, forward-leaning posture of around 60 degrees. It had thick, accentuated quad muscles in the front of its thighs that angled forward and tapered down to small knees. Below its knees, I could see that its lower legs angled back to hocks, just like a dog has. Because of its hocks, it looked like it could lean back on them if it wanted to and leap or jump. Also, because of the way its legs looked, I got the impression it could jump and run very well. After a few moments of standing there, looking at my back door, it turned and walked into the cornfield that was behind my property. As it walked into the cornfield, I could still see its head, over the top of the corn stalks, which were around 8 feet tall, at that time. Having such a clear view of it chilled me to the bone. Around 1973, my wife was living in Chicago and was about 11 years old, at the time. The area was inner city Chicago, not near the lake or the woods. It was summer and she was spending the night with her girl cousins, in the basement bedroom of their house. In the early morning hours, around 4 a.m., the dog was growling and woke them up. Those type of basements have windows high on the wall. In one window, my wife saw something looking in. It was difficult to make out exactly what it was, but there was enough light outside from a street light to see the outline and movement of something looking through the window. The three girls all screamed, which woke and brought the two older boy cousins down, to see what was going on. The girls told them what they had seen and the boys, who had been sleeping in their clothes, ran out to investigate. The rest of this is their own account, which they reported, a short time afterward. They saw someone running away and they chased after him. It took them a minute or so to get a good look at who they were chasing, because of the sparse lighting in the area, but they said what they saw looked like a large werewolf. They thought it was someone trying to pull a prank, a man wearing a very realistic werewolf costume, dismissing the possibility that it was real. They lost sight of it and eventually returned. So, that is about it. Knowing what we know now, we both think it must have been a dog man. A friend of mine had moved south, to work with his uncle. Things didn't work out, so he called and wanted to know if I would pick him up, at the bus station, in Springfield. I told him, sure. The day he came back, his bus wasn't due until 1.30 a.m. When it showed up, he was starving, so we headed up the road, to steak and shake. While we were eating, some girls showed up, after a night of partying. We stayed around and talked with them, for a while. Well, by the time we left, Brian wanted to see if we could swing by one of his old girlfriend's houses, before she went to work. He wanted to see if he could stay with her, for a while. I didn't have anything to do the next day, so I told him that would be fine. She lived in Assumption. To get there, we headed back to Taylorville. Then, instead of heading on to Pana, where I lived, we would cut across, through the country, to get to Assumption. To do this, you have to go out by Bertinetti Lake. At that time, they had just started developing the place, for housing, so it was semi-rural, with woods around the lake and the road we were on. So, here we are driving and just about to cross a bridge, when this huge, canine type thing comes running out of the woods, to our right. There were good sized, freshly dug ditches on each side of the highway. This thing jumped from the bottom of the right ditch, cleared the highway, and landed on the back side of the left ditch. Then, it ran into the woods. It happened so fast, I didn't even have time to hit the brakes, before it was already gone. I know, some would say it was just a dog, that surprised us, but we both agreed, it was too big. Besides, 
I don't know of any dogs that can jump that far. I remember, it had gray and light brown fur. It was very bulky and muscular. It was also on all fours. We decided that we didn't need to hang around the area and sped up. We told our friends, but most just laughed it off. Whatever, we both knew what we saw. Years later, I was looking on the BFRO website. I saw there were two sightings reported, that took place, about a mile to the east, from where our encounter happened. When I first read the woman's report, years ago, she said it took off running, on all fours, and was wolf-like. I see now, someone has changed her story to sound more like a Bigfoot. However, her sighting and another reported after her say that this was where Highway 48 crosses the south fork of the Sangamon River. Follow the river back east, until you see Lincoln Trail Road. That is the bridge we were at. It seems like it uses the river bottom to stay hidden. Also, there are all kinds of housing additions there, now. I went to their community-wide garage sales there, a few times. It seems as though a lot of cats and dogs go missing in that area. Posters were up everywhere. Well, I know it was a little long-winded, but that was my encounter. I had never heard of dogmen but I saw one in town run past the floodgates, down by the river, on my way to the recently opened park that was closed due to floodwaters. It didn't look like a scary werewolf but more like a weird dog, running on three legs. Its tail was curled up. I went on a quest to find out what this was because I have never hallucinated and I knew what I had seen. The ones most people are reporting are not exactly like what I saw. However, had it stopped to look at me, I'm sure I would have found him quite a bit more frightened. I was on patrol as a deputy sheriff for the county and was usually assigned to the Highway 13 and Highway 30 corridors. However, I recall that particular July 1st however that a young man, 16 or 17 year old, had been sucked into a storm drain which emptied into Cedar Lake near the Quaker Oats plant. This is a place with heavy foot traffic and located in an urban setting the area is also bordered by Mohawk Park. As the search went on, into the night, the local PD got the county involved. I parked my cruiser at what I believe was the electric company storage yard. The yard had what I estimated to be a 10-foot fence that ran parallel to a paved bike trail on the other side of which runs a large concrete spillway to siphon off flood waters. I arrived at what I estimate to be roughly 11.30 p.m. to 11.45 p.m. I estimate only because I assure you there never was, nor will be, an official statement or record with my name on it telling this story. As I left the lot I was at the north end of the lake and headed west on foot there was a lot of brush and saplings between the spillway and trail so I proceeded on to the point the trail turned south near where Cedar Lake empties into the Cedar River under the railroad tracks leading into Quaker Oats. There are multiple tracks at the turn I mentioned before and only the track furthest from myself had a train on it. With my attention on the spillway, I hardly noticed at first a faint red colored light a distance north from my position. It was coming down the track on the other side of the train. I had thought it perhaps the tail lights of a car, not being from that patrol route I had no knowledge that there was, in fact, no road in that direction. There ain't much things in the world that scare me, put simply I've seen some shit in my days. But nothing prepared me for that night. The lights disappeared and that was that or so I had figured. About five minutes passed before I hear a snorting almost sniffing sound coming from the other side of the tracks. When I turned the first thing I saw were the eyes. They glowed a dull red, the thing was at least 8 foot tall pushing 450 I judged this by the fact that I am 6 foot 4, and weight 280. I turned my light into this day wish I hadn't. It had pointed ears and a long muzzle and it looked me right in the face before it bolted into the timber. It was not a mask and it was not, a person in a costume. Who would walk up on an armed man with a police radio in full uniform and risk getting shot? I remember it was surreal, so final I guess. I know what's in the dark now. 
People can say or think what they want but even with a chambered round and full magazine and a Glock 40. Didn't feel like enough firepower. I unholstered and fell back toward the trail and to the electric company storage yard. Putting the fence to my back I made a hasty retreat to the lot with my cruiser. I don't think I holstered my pistol till I got out of the park. I never spoke of it then and honestly don't know why I am now but one thing is for certain it knew I was there and it was watching my every move. I'll never go back and I no longer work with the department since becoming a minister. But I still carry a Glock with hollow point rounds tipped with silver if, and I rarely do, leave my home at night. If you know anything about Kansas, you'll know it's dry, flat and void of much forestry. As a kid, I lived on a farm in the middle of nowhere. I remember that we had our own place set outside, complete with swings and monkey bars. Nearby was a large patch of overgrown weeds, almost as tall as six feet in some places. I hated playing at the place set, because sometimes, around sunset, I'd see red eyes from within the weed patch. I told my grandparents, but they dismissed it as coyotes. However, one day, I wanted answers and I approached the weeds. Upon closer inspection, I saw a creature that looked similar to a dog, with shaggy white fur. I remember that I thought its front paws looked like that of a gorilla's. The creature moved away from me and I never saw it in that weed patch again. A year later, I saw the same figure lurking in the dark, outside of the house. I was so paranoid, my mother could not get me to leave the house for a long time, except for going to school. I haven't seen this humanoid since, nor am I completely sure it is the fabled dog man. Since it was summer break for my school, I was lazily lounging at home watching TV. I got bored, so I went outside to see if I could do anything with my chickens, like feed them worms and snails. Before I go into more detail, I should explain the area I live in. My home is on the outskirts of the city I live in. I had about five or seven chickens at the time, and we hadn't expanded the coop, so it was a small pen connecting to two sides of the chicken coop, which is wooden and sturdy. The only ways to get into the coop is either through the trap door attached to the big door and the three windows. One window is on one side of the door and the second window on the other side. The third window is a large window. Keep in mind that they all have traps connected to them so they can be closed. We have seven acres of woodland that we call the back pasture, and if you've ever been back there you could see that it's a popular habitat for the local deer. There was also a wild boar that was roaming around at the time, and I don't know how it got there. We had been having trouble with poachers for a while, considering the population of deer in the woods. One poacher had set up a trail cam, one that was motion activated. There was an old rusty deer stand that had been put on a tree a long time ago, and the tree had begun to grow around it. Beyond our acres of woods, there's a large cornfield owned by our neighbors, and beyond that is a forest. I don't know what the forest is like beyond the field since we've never been there. I went outside to do something with my chickens, and I had brought along a bucket of corn for feeding the deer after. When I walked out of my home, I saw a doe was sitting in the tall grass, I thought it was sleeping since it had its head down and wasn't moving. I, being the curious little nut I was, decided that I would sneak up on the deer and get a picture of it to show to my mother when she got home from work. I crept as silently as I could across the yard that separated me from the deer. I should also mention that we have a clearing with a burn pit in it that was filled with cedar branches. I was creeping across my yard towards the deer, and when I had cleared the burn pit and was about 10 yards from it I realized that the deer wasn't asleep, but it was dead. It was the most disgusting sight I had ever seen. Its intestines were completely gone, the flesh on the body of the doe shredded to pieces and blood absolutely everywhere. It looked as if it had been sitting there for a while, and it smelled like it, too. Most of the blood was dried and the air reeked with the stench of rotting flesh, urine, and what seemed like a hint of wet dog. 
Something that creeped me out about the scene was although it was a rotting carcass, there were no insects at all around it. It was as if the usual lively forest was deader than the deer. Not even the neighbor's cattle made a sound. It looked as if the poor deer had simply been left after being brutally attacked and half eaten, which it most likely was. I left the bucket at the beginning of the trail, thinking that I would come out later with my mother and grain the deer when she got home. Then, I started to walk back to my house. I had barely taken a few steps when I heard a low, snarling growl that sounded like a wolf, although it seemed distorted as if it were being played on an old radio sorry, that's the only way I think of describing it. Against my better judgment, I turned my head around, and I saw what looked like the biggest freaking wolf I'd ever seen. It was on all fours, its fur was black and matted in places, its face was what you'd expect a wolf to look like, although it was broad and the muzzle seemed a little short, although the way it was curling its lips made it look as if its snout was plenty long, and its eyes were yellow, not a bright yellow like the yellow of a flower or the sun, but a dim, amber, red-yellow, if that makes sense. Its ears looked like that of a Doberman pincer, with the cropped effect, its front legs were long, and it looked as if it were a bodybuilder. Its paws, if you can even call them paws, looked like huge hands with long claws at the end of them. It stood up, and I heard the most sickening popping sound you could ever imagine. It sounded like the sound of popping joints, but it seemed amplified as if it were being played through a microphone and the sound was coming out of loudspeakers. Its body looked like a bodybuilder's pumped up on steroids, it was so big. It had no tail, that I could tell, and it seemed to tower over me, although I was a good 10 meters from it. I was about 5 foot 4 inches at the time, and I came nowhere close to its height, it was so tall that the tip of its ears could almost touch the top of a young cedar. It let out a loud howl, which sounded more like a roar and it charged at me. Doing the only thing I knew to do while hyped up on fear and adrenaline, I began to run away from it. I remember clearing my yard in what seemed like hours but was most likely only a few seconds, and running inside, slamming and locking all of the doors and windows. As I calmed down a small bit, I had realized that if it had really wanted to kill me that it would have, that what I had experienced was not an attack charge, but a bluff. I was lucky to get away with my life. Although this happened almost two years ago, it still terrifies me to think about it. The deer was gone the next day, and ever since that evening I have been weary around the woods, only going in them in broad daylight, only when I absolutely had to, and never without a weapon. Sadly, I cannot say that I am one of those people that have stopped experiencing things after the encounter, although I only had nightmares for a month after that day in June. Nothing really started to happen again until about two months ago when I was staying up at night playing on the laptop. I had started to hear things moving around on the porch and turned on the light to see the shape of something huge disappearing behind the corner of my house. There was also one of the rare times I went into the woods after the first encounter when I was helping my mother clear brush from the hunting clearing. I was going to get the mower and was walking the trail to do so when I heard bipedal footsteps following me off to my side. They stopped whenever I stopped, and I eventually ran out of the woods and I haven't been back since. I asked my late great-grandmother about the creature I had seen in the woods, and she informed me that there was something called the wolf head man that stalked the Kansa tribe, preying on small children that strayed too far from their teepees. Later, I was informed by my history teacher that my house had actually been built on a tribal burial ground, and I have since been wondering if that had something to do with it. I hadn't heard about the wolf head man before she had told me about it. When I saw that there were several eyewitness reports that were proved to be truthful, it made me feel a lot better about coming out with this information. I had attempted to tell people previous to this submission, but everyone either said I was stupid, crazy, or just a plain liar. One thing's for certain, I am not stupid, I am not crazy, and I am most definitely not a liar. I know what I saw, and what I saw was a dog man. Before I say anything about my encounter, 
I just want to clarify that when I saw this thing, I went to Google and searched up what it was. I came across this website and found that another person in Jackson County had had an encounter with something like this, so I know I'm not crazy. I'd been studying wolves and their behavior for about three years before I had this encounter, and I know that considering Jackson County is about 656 square miles with a population of 674,158 and it being practically infested with wildlife such as deer, livestock, and predators such as coyotes and foxes, it wouldn't be likely for a large predator such as a wolf to be lurking in the sparse woodland. The average wolf territory is 13 to 2,400 me squared, and it'd be easy for such a huge creature to live just in Jackson County alone. This may even be the very same dog wolf man thing that the other person saw. Anyway, on to the encounter. I was just chilling on the laptop in the living room, watching people blow stuff up, when I felt like I had to go to the bathroom. I set the laptop down and put my headphones on the keyboard and got out of the chair. Let me clarify, I'm not a bloody psychic or a medium or anything, but I have a sort of sixth sense where I can tell if something is watching me, and I knew something was. We have a huge window on the wall just above the couch, and it was a particularly cold night, so the windows caught things like breath fairly well. I turned to the window, thinking that whatever it was watching me from there, and I knew I'd see it if it was we have motion sensing floodlights, and it'd have to be either standing on something or tall as the devil himself in order to see into the window of our trailer it was around 6 to 8 feet off the ground, with the top of it being about 11 feet. I looked over to the window, and the only thing I could see was that the floodlights were on and something seemed to duck under the window, like a kid playing hide and seek. I didn't think anything of it, considering our neighbors were a sort of druggies and alcoholics and often came to look in our windows, and every opening to the house was locked, so I had nothing to worry about. I went to the bathroom, and when I finished I washed my hands and went back to the laptop. I noticed that the floodlights went out, so whatever it was gone. Not thinking anything else of it, I went back to watching people blow stuff up. I should mention also that my eyes are sharp, sharp enough to spot a bird about 50 feet away in a tree, so it's no surprise that when the floodlights came back on I noticed immediately. I glanced up from the screen, expecting a drunken or high idiot to be looking in with a stupid expression on his face, but I was frozen by what I saw. It was a huge, huge wolf, that was looking at me with dirty amber yellow eyes. Its ears looked like they were torn or cropped or something, and the face looked sort of human-like. Not really a full human face, but more like the jawline looked very masculine and human compared to the rest of its face. Its lips were curled back and it seemed as if it were snarling, though I couldn't hear it if it was, and its breath caught on the cold glass. It was so tall that the top of its head was halfway up the window, and if I had to guess how wide it was I'd probably say maybe the width of my shoulders. I knew that whatever it was, it most likely had wolfish instincts, so I did the only thing I knew to do, which was avoid eye contact and make yourself look as small as you could whilst having your throat and underside showing. This is a very common submissive position, and although I was scared out of my mind, I knew that holding eye contact would make me seem like a challenger and running would make me seem like prey. When I did the submissive position it must have worked for it to leave me alone because it just hit the window, which made the entire trailer shake, and it went away. I hadn't heard or seen anything else like it since, although I do hear the odd howl coming from the back roads. God help the poor idiot that decides to try and hunt this thing down. I can tell you know that whatever it was was not friendly because if it were, it wouldn't have slammed my window as hard as it had and it would not have been growling like I'd taken its food. Although it practically did assault my window, I could understand why it was upset. I was on its territory, after all, an intruder and possibly a threat to its existence and its prey. It's really just best to stay out of its way and respect it. After all, it is one of God's many strange creatures in the world.
I was driving home from doing some shopping in a nearby town and was all alone just driving and listening to the radio. It was just before sunset on a beautiful summer day. I was admiring the sky because it was such a bright orange. While driving through some S curves in the road, I made the first turn and saw some deer dart across the road. Immediately I hit the brakes to slow down, not knowing if there were more to come out of the woods. On the opposite side of the road, it drops down a steep embankment to a farm field. I had slowed the car down and scanned the tree line for more deer. That's when this thing jumped out of the woods running after the deer. He landed in the middle of the road and cleared the rest of the road in his next stride. It's so hard to comprehend what I saw but, it sounds like the descriptions that people have claimed on here. It was a grey figure with a short sleek coat. I did not see a tail on this creature. It was on all fours and was the same height as the deer. His head was very odd. It looked like a dog head with cropped pointed ears but had a very short muzzle. He briefly turned his head towards me when he crossed and his eyes, I wouldn't say they glowed but they weren't normal animal eyes. They were like dull yellow. And they definitely stood out. His body was what really confused me because the way it moved was like a human would move when trying to run on all fours. Its gait looked lazy. Like he was just kinda loping across the road. It was very muscular on the front end but had a very thin almost sickly looking abdominal area and hind legs. Once he was across the road I lost sight of him over the embankment. I was so confused as to what I saw that I didn't tell anyone right away for fear that they would think I was crazy. I have been searching for answers since then but came up with nothing. I eventually told my husband and one close friend but neither of them had heard of anything that matched my description. I'm still not 100% sure that I saw a dog man but it is the only thing I have come across that sounds reasonably close to what I saw. I used to work about 30 miles away from where I live. One night, I had been stuck in heavy traffic, coming home. I take Lasix, so after a while, I really had to go to the bathroom. I kept telling myself that I was almost home and tried to hold it until I got there. By the time I got to my exit, I knew I wasn't going to make it to my house, so I pulled up to an area where Fidelity Investments is located and found an area that was isolated. This area is heavily wooded, with walking trails and a lot of game, but it is also in a very populated area. I pulled up a little side drive, off one of the main roads. That little drive is about 100 feet long, with only room for one car. It went up in elevation and had bushes on the right side, facing the main road. On the left side, there was a guardrail and a view of the valley below. The area up there is huge and isolated, with several buildings that are all spaced out. The place is dark at night because there are intermittent street lights up there. At night it's pretty deserted too. A few cars go through that area, though, because it's a shortcut people use to go from Taylor Mill over to 3 Liters Highway, where there are stores, restaurants, etc. When you're up there, you're above everything around this area. When I stopped, I got out of my car, waited a moment and looked around, to make sure there were no other cars. It was winter, so the bushes between where I was and the road below me didn't have many leaves on them. Because of that, you could see right through them. I was up on this little rise, about 20 or 30 feet above the drive, which was four lanes wide. To the left of me was a street light and more woods that went down another hill, to the main road. I went to the back of my car and did what I had to do. When I finished, I stood up and all at once, every hair on my body stood up. I knew I wasn't alone. I scanned the area in front of me and must have heard something behind me because I turned around and there were three deer standing there, all huddled up together, between my car and the guardrail. They weren't looking at me. They were looking across the road. I looked back over there and that was when I saw a figure standing between the bushes in front of it and the tree line behind it. It was huge. I stand five foot five. Some of those bushes were about six feet tall but they only came up to about the collarbone area on this thing. Due to the street light, to the right of it, 
about 20 feet away, I was able to get a pretty clean outline of this thing. It had a large dog-shaped head and pointed ears. I couldn't make out its neck, but I could make out massive shoulders. That's when it growled. It was a deep vibration I could feel in my chest. My body just took over at that point. I have to explain this part of it to you. I worked security for years, in California, in the music business. As a woman, I have to really work out and train to defend myself. I kicked box for 8 years and worked out every day. I also trained dogs. Mainly Anatolian Shepherds and German Shepherds. Sometimes, I have to establish who is the alpha and to do that, I get them down, hold them in place, grab them by their ear and growl until they submit. Then the training can start. So, when this thing growled at me, it was just pure instinct. I dropped down to a crouching position and growled, right back at it. When I did that, it stopped growling and started sniffing the air. Its snout went up and it turned its head slightly as it was sniffing. It then took a few steps forward. I was still crouched down, on all fours and moved forward, still growling at the thing. When I did that, it stopped. I stood up and kept staring right at it. I never broke eye contact with it. Then, it slowly stepped back into the tree line, until I couldn't make it out as clearly as before and started to move to the right of me. The deer were still behind me. They were so close I could have reached out and touched them. I waved my arms and told them to get out of there. When I did that, they went back over the guardrail and took off down the hill. That's when I jumped in my car and got out of there as fast as I could. I felt this thing was trying to circle behind me and I wasn't going to wait around for that. Do I think I scared it? No. But, I do think I confused it for a couple of minutes and that gave me time to move. I told my husband about what had happened up there, but I didn't tell him exactly what I saw. He would think I was nuts and to be honest, I thought I was a little crazy myself until I saw a picture of a dog man. I know there are other things in this world that can't be explained. I've seen them. But, this was beyond any of those things. Since this has happened, I can't take that shortcut through that area, anymore. My husband took me back over that way once, to see the area and I was begging him to get me out of there the whole time. I thought I was going to throw up. The wildlife up there has almost totally disappeared. I never see anything up on the hills anymore. The street I live on is only about one mile or so down the hill from this place and lately, we have seen coyotes on the streets, like they have been chased out and pets here have started to go missing. We've also seen a large, black figure moving through our backyards down here. The dogs throughout the neighborhood go crazy regularly now, too. People were calling the cops when we saw that large, black figure jumping fences. I'm concerned that it has come down the hill, after eating everything up there. My encounter happened a few years ago, in South Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. Here in Louisiana, we call counties parishes, in case you didn't know. I was hunting deer or wild pigs one night, on a protection levy system that was built to protect the town from hurricane flood waters. As I walked to where the levy turns off to the left, there was a canal woods that was about a 100 yards from some houses. To the left was a natural ridge that goes out, into swamps and marshes. Well, as I made that turn from the ridge of oak trees, I heard a growl. I thought it might have been a coyote or dog, so I walked slower. Then, I heard brush and a smaller sized tree shake and another growl. I shined my light in the direction of the sound and saw a pair of eyes that were reflecting an amber slash yellow color. What surprised me was the fact that the brush was about six foot high and the eyes were about a foot above the brush. When I saw those eyes, I slowly backed up, while keeping my light on the thing. As I walked back to the turn, to head back to my truck, which was parked about three quarters of a mile away, it came out the woods. I lit the thing up with my light again. Now, I was probably 30 feet from it. I saw its whole body and face. The body was covered with black hair, 
with some brown mixed in. The hair was thickest around its head, neck, chest and upper back. It looked a lot like a lion's mane but wasn't as pronounced, since all of the hair was the same color. It had pointy ears, with a little bit of hair coming off the points, making the ears seem a little longer. It stood on two legs, but the legs were weird and backward-like. The arms were really long, longer than the legs. Its hands were like a mixture of human and bear, like really big raccoon front paws. It had paws, but it also had fingers. That's the only way to describe it. If you watch the movie, The Howling, you'll get an idea what this thing looked like. It's as if whoever made that movie knew something others didn't. Now, at this point, I was freaking out, so I pulled up my rifle. I hunt with a Romanian AK, with a camo paint job, I did myself. The way I was hunting wasn't exactly legal. That's why I took my Romanian AK. If I had to toss it, I wouldn't be out much money. The rounds I use are special rounds, made to hunt feral hogs. I've dropped deer and hogs with these rounds before. One shot and they're done. But back to the story, as I pulled my rifle up, to the ready, it growled and walked a few steps toward me. I fired a round right into its chest area. I knew I had hit it, because the creature took a step back. As it stepped back, I ran toward my truck. That's when it let out a loud growl and a howl like I had never heard before. I grew up hunting and fishing and thought I knew everything in the woods, but I hadn't heard anything like the sounds it made before. As I ran back to the truck, it stalked me but kept its distance. As I got close to the well-lit area, where my truck was parked, by the town library and elementary school, it stopped following me. I tried to find anyone who may have had similar encounters in the area, but all I could find was old legends of the Rugarau, which is pronounced, Ru-ga-ru. I told my grandpa about what had happened but told him it was a friend who had told me it happened to him. I also told him that it sounded like a crazy story to me. He told me when he was 17, in the same area, at night, hunting, he heard a howl like nothing he had ever heard before. He also told me that something had stalked him, as he ran home that night. He said he never saw what it was, but could hear it following him through the brush and swamps. That encounter has changed my life. My perception of what is real and what is not will never be the same again. I still haven't gotten over that night. I went back a few days after that incident and found two large dog tracks, as big as my hand. I wear a size LG glove. I was 14 years old and lived in central Louisiana, at the time. My mother had always been interested in the paranormal. She'd buy copies of UFO magazine and watch documentaries on Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, etc. So, I just grew up being interested in things like that, at face value. I always believed in them, but I never had any inkling that werewolves, dogmen or whatever could possibly exist. Anyway, I lived in a mobile home park, which was on a two-lane highway. Highway 28 East, to be exact. It was a long street, with a cul-de-sac type of dead end. At the dead end, to the left was the only brick home in the park. Straight ahead, was thin woods and several trails going off in every direction. To the right, slightly, was a deep ditch, that people had dumped junk and trash in, like old washing machines, broken laundry baskets or what have you. A thin, metal wire fence ran from the ditch, across, into the woods and out of sight. We, the kids in the neighborhood, had what we called a club, where we would all gather, to hang out. Some of us had gathered busted or discarded dining room chairs and placed them in the center of what was the thinnest area of trees. I had come there to figure out where to put everything. Beyond the deep ditch, further into the woods, was a small stream, with hills on each side. An enormous old oak tree had fallen beside the stream, on the side I was on. I spotted an old metal folding table, near the stream and went down to inspect it. I thought it would be a good item to put in the center of the chairs. It seemed to be in good condition, 
So I decided to head home. I figured I'd get it the next morning. The next morning, I made my way toward the metal wire fence, which somehow, I don't know why, had been bent, on both its top and bottom, inwards, toward the center of the fence. I was about to duck under it, when I heard the distinct sound of sniffing, so I turned to see what it was. Standing on the other side of the stream was a seven to eight foot tall creature, sniffing the air. Its head was turned slightly. The first thought that entered my mind was, oh my god. Werewolves are real. It stood on two, powerfully built, muscular legs, which ended in enormous paws. It had no tail. It had a massive chest, as well as extremely muscular arms and hands. The hands seemed to have the same kind of pads that a paw has, but they were arranged differently. It had a wolf-like head and tall, pointed ears. The eyes glowed red. The ears were in proportion to the head. It had a snout or muzzle. It kept sniffing the air as it stepped over the tree trunk like it was nothing. I would have had to physically climb it, to get over it. I thought it was coming after me. It stopped and seemed to be breathing or panting, but there was this deep, rumble that accompanied it. I decided to get out of there, before it did see me and ducked up under the fence. I ran to my bike which was parked off the road and pedaled my butt home. I never went into those woods again, after that. About a month and a half, to two months later, we moved to Mississippi. It wasn't until many years later that I discovered the term, dogman. It scared me, but also started me on my fascination with ancient myths, legends, werewolves and many other non-Bigfoot cryptids. The incident happened in late summer 2018. It was in the mountains of North Georgia. I'm a surveyor with 20 years experience in Georgia, Tennessee, Alabama, and North slash South Carolina. So, I'm extremely comfortable in the woods as I spend so much time outdoors most of that time being very far back in the forest. And a great deal of it is on national forestry land. Where you don't see anyone for days at a time. On the day it happened, I was surveying a piece of property around a small core of engineers lake bordering a large tract of national forest land. I was operating a robotic survey total station, transit, which means you don't need a partner to run a survey crew and instead of having two or three people on a crew you generally work alone. The property was fairly large approximately 500 acres made up of mostly steep mountains and hollows covered in dense mountain laurel. I had just finished up cutting a traverse line along the property line running to the top of the ridge roughly 350 to 400 away with my machete. Traverse lines are typically about 5 foot wide and cut as close to the ground as possible to ensure a line of sight for the instrument. I just walked back down the slope to get ready to traverse to the top of the ridge when I noticed someone or something hairy wearing what I originally thought was a hat slowly walk across the opening that I just made a few minutes earlier and stopped to look at me. It had a large hand reaching up to grab the tree limb it was next to. At the time I thought someone must have been walking or hiking the top of the ridge as it's not uncommon to see people from time to time. But. Then I realized it was way too hot to be wearing a large shaggy brown jacket as it was in the high 90s. And as it stared downhill at me I could make out pointed ears on top of its head and a long snout. Then it slowly walked out of sight. At this point I took out my headphones and started paying closer attention to the situation. As I took out my headphones I realized it was dead silent in the woods and in Georgia during the summertime it's always extremely loud with insects. I waited a few minutes and walked to the top of the ridge to grab my equipment, that I seriously considered leaving, and see what was going on and notice disturbed vegetation leading in the direction I saw it walking. Thinking harder about what was happening I realized that the lower limb on the tree I saw it walk behind as it went out of sight was right at six tall. And what I originally thought to be a jacket was fur. That's when it all set in and I got scared. I could hear something moving in the short distance coming from the area it walked to. So, I decided to start making the 45 to 50 minute walk to the truck. 
I could hear movement up on the ridge parallel and above me during my walk back. But, I didn't think it was moving in reaction to me necessarily. Although I wasn't willing to wait around and find out. I made it to the truck and since then I've only told two people about my experience. That was pretty much it as far as the encounter goes. I know it wasn't a bear as I've been around them my whole life and see them all the time. I've definitely been deep in the woods on several occasions and experienced all sounds and signs of life just disappear at the drop of a hat. It takes on new significance now. I carry a pistol every day and on some occasions a short rifle if the job calls for it due to bears, wild dogs, finding illegal pot growing operations, etc. But, I can definitely say it brought me zero comfort on that day. I was scared to my very core and have a new sense of respect for the woods now. I would advise that if you work alone in the woods please pay attention to your surroundings. I think a lot about what might have happened if I hadn't looked up when I did. Or if I'd been a little slower walking back downhill. As I was probably very close to it with my back turned before walking downhill with my headphones and listening to Joe Rogan. If it wanted me I wouldn't be here today. I firmly believe I was within mere yards of it up on the ridge with no idea I was being shadowed by a monster. People go missing all the time in the woods and are never seen again. I believe I know what takes some of them as I've seen it. Whether you believe me or not is of no consequence to me. But, it took me a long time to feel comfortable telling anyone about my experience. If it helps one person pay attention in the woods I'm happy to be called crazy over it. Stay safe and please watch your kids in the woods above anyone else. God bless.